farm email list. And uh, what's neat is someone will be on there from New York and then I'll notice they'll sign up. And I think, why is someone from New York signing up for a raw milk email list in Oregon? But every once in a while, they'll send me an email and say, hey, my sister-in-law lives two towns over and I told her about your farm. So it's, even though you think you're really super local, it's okay if people from all over sign up. Look, I ended up here doing the talk tonight because Joe got on my email list about raw milk years ago. So that's how the world works. I have people come from all over the world because they're vacationing in Oregon or they're doing a six month stint there for something and they will become customers of our farm for that time. Okay, and then step three is relationship and trust. Again, people buy from you because of the relationship. If you don't have a relationship with them, they won't go out of their way to buy from you and they for sure won't pay your prices. Because when you don't have a relationship with them, the first question out of their mouth is how much. If you have a relationship with them, they're interested in all these other things and then they'll say, give me three of those and they don't look at price. And I'm not telling you we have to secretly gouge them. I'm just saying that our prices have to be considerably more than anything they could find comparable to yours in the grocery store because you just don't have the economy of scale that you would have there. And then consistent communication is key to building a relationship. This is where social media doesn't work. It doesn't keep in touch with everybody consistently enough. I've heard the, st the statistic now that someone has to hear from you 16 times before they will buy from you. It used to be like seven times, but now with the volume of emails and things. Um, so you've got to be emailing them once a week or twice a month, or at the very, very minimum once a month, but that doesn't really work too well. So say twice a month, year round and figure it's going to take weeks or months of them being on your relation or being on your email list and you building a relationship with them through writing them emails to that very one ideal customer could be months i've had people on my email list for two years and they will call and say i've been getting your emails for a couple years now and i think i want to come meet you that's how long it, it's it's different time for everybody and just know that it might take someone two weeks to decide, well, I really like them, I wanna go buy from them, and someone else two years. Email marketing makes sure you're there, and consistent. You can't take the season off. If you're a seasonal farm, you have to keep in touch with them in the winter. So say you're a seasonal flower farm. Well, in the winter, you are not selling flowers, but maybe you just send out a blog post, an email linking to your blog post on how to create the perfect holiday centerpiece. You're not selling them anything in the winter. You're just building that relationship and maintaining it. When you have something to sell again in the spring, they're gonna be out there ready to buy from you because you've been showing them that they matter to you by keeping in touch with them all winter without even trying to sell them anything. All right, so when you build trust and relationship, that's when people love getting your emails. I'm sure all of you are on email lists. Are there emails that you love that you go to and open? Yeah. And then there are those that you just delete, delete, delete. <laughs> but there are those few that I open no matter what for various reasons. You can be that person in your uh, ideal customer's inbox. And then what's great is when it is time to sell something, you sell out quickly. So if you've been keeping a, a in touch with them all winter long, twice a month, all year, and then boom, the season, it's open, it's first, first market of the season, they're all gonna show up and buy from you. So it becomes really easy to sell out. When you show them they matter to you, even when they aren't buying from you, then you become important to them. What happens is farmers often just communicate with their customers when they have something to sell, and then you teach your customers that, oh, they, got, they want my money, they want to sell me something. But when you keep in touch with them consistently year round, no matter what, you show them that they are important to you. Okay, so things you're going to email your list, it's those questions they're asking you. They're going to tell you what they want to hear from you. Could be recipes using your products, how-to videos. Again, you may think it's super easy to do whatever it is you do with your product. 
guaranteed you're the you're the only one. <laughs> you know, your your friends don't. You may think, well, I grow broccoli. Everybody knows how to cook broccoli. They don't. So just pull out your iPhone. You don't need edited videos. Um, we just we just do home videos. That's what people want to see today of you handling your product and you take the mystery away for them. Inspirational stories. If you're just starting, like say you're not going to have something to sell till next season or next summer or next year, you can start your inspirational story of you building this farm. So maybe you send out an email linked to a blog post every month just about what you're doing this month on, you know, like this month we're, we're visiting farms and trying to figure out, you know, and, and just kind of keep a little diary of building your farm. Your customers will follow along on that journey and when you finally have something to sell, they'll want to buy from you. And then of course, educational articles, research articles. Um, if you get a lot of questions all the time, you could send out an email just answering F8. You know, here's the top five questions I know you've been wanting to know the answers to, here they are, link over to the blog post and you answer the questions there. So this is what devoted subscribers do for your business. Um, and then where do you find dream customers? Okay, so the thing with farmers is a lot of farmers want to hide on their farms and they want people to come to them. And not just farmers, it's really any business owner, anybody who starts a business, you know, especially making something, it's because they love their craft and they want the people to come to them. But you've got to get off your farms. You've got to get out in the community. Every, every customer that ends up buying from you is probably because you touched them somehow. And I mean like you almost physically went up and you met them in a room somehow. You've got to get off your farms. That action alone, like I set aside Wednesday afternoons. I pick my daughter up at school at 3, so I'm done with my work by noon. And I spend Wednesday between 12 and 3 either visiting businesses or maybe businesses who've sent me people and I'll drop off a dozen eggs. Or I'll have coffee with a customer or uh, a I will show up at a Rotary Club meeting and give a short presentation. But every Wednesday I get off the farm and you will notice your sales increase. So say yes to every invite you get at first. Someday you'll become, now I've been speaking for 10 years, I can say no, no to some requests. But the first few years you say, if you're invited to essential oil parties or any sort of home party, you go to that party and you take a little bit of whatever your product is. If you're a flower farmer and it's the middle of winter, you take a bouquet from the grocery store so that you become known as the flower farmer who always has flowers with her, even in the middle of winter. But wherever you get invited to, you go and you make a personal connection with people. And if you're too nervous and you're scared, the only way to being comfortable with it is to go through it and do it and be nervous and scared. Um, I used to have customers come in my farm store and at the very start it was someone who said, hey, we have the Rotary Club meeting every week. We meet at the pizza parlor for lunch and uh, these are all business owners in the community. And they said, will you come talk to us about your farm? I was like, what do you mean? They said, well, we just want to know what it's like to wake up and milk a cow. I mean, people are fascinated by what all of you are doing. It doesn't seem like it, but they are. So I show up. I tell them they're all eating pizza. I talk about what it's like to wake up and milk the cows before my kids get up, you know, and I'm back in the house to make them breakfast by 7 a.m. because I got up super early. And then the next week we had 10 new customers in our farm store. So at first you say yes to every invitation you get. I got in, we have a local university and they had a little food meet, they called it and they had different farmers show up and then community members come and I met so many people there who then turned into customers. So you gotta get off the farm, your farm, and just go, sometimes I'm at the grocery store, Buy Mart, and I'm buying all these big glass canning jars that we put our milk in, and someone in line will say, what are, what are you canning? And I'll say, oh, I milk a cow. And they'll be like, oh, milk? I haven't had milk since I was a kid. Do you have a card? So I've gotten so many customers just because I'm buying things for the farm and they're wondering, you know, 
because it, it's unusual. <laughs> the, the things we're doing, other people are really fascinated by. So when you can get out in your community and talk about that, you will build a customer base. Whoops. What did I do here? Oh, figured it out. Okay. <laughs> to wrap up, and then we're, we'll do questions in just a second, and then we'll take a short restroom break. Okay, your heart-centered marketing plan. Step one, define that ideal customer. I challenge you all to come back next week with a description of your ideal customer to share. Um, women or men, it's probably women, <laughs> and uh, what age, and what are her interests, and you learn this by talking to people who are already buying your products, if you already have customers, or people who buy the product you know you're gonna raise, and ask them, what's important to you about buying th that product? And they'll tell you, and, and that'll help you in defining who she is. Step two, two is to grow your email list with devoted subscribers, not just random people. And then step three, build relationship with consistent emailing. That's one of the biggest mistakes people make is they build their email list and then they just stop emailing for the winter because they got pregnant or they got sick or they went back to school or they you know, th took the winter off. And then you start over and people unsubscribe because they don't remember, you, you didn't make them feel important all winter so you know, they, they don't show up for you. <coughs> okay, so to be very transparent, I have an email list, and if you guys text the word 3 Cal Marketing to that number, you will get, I have an Instagram guide, a price for profit course, so you can get on our email list if you want those freebies. Also, I have a podcast that I started in May, and the first, because many of you are new, the first five episodes on the podcast, it's called The Profitable Mindset Podcast. The first five ep episodes are the 25 things you need to do to start and set up your farm business. And it's gonna, uh, it's gonna save you years of time. And even if you've been in business for, f I have people who've been in farming for 10 years who listen to that and realize they missed some of those key things that'll help their profitability. So just the first five episodes of my podcast are free and of course, and will help you tremendously. Um, Okay, my website, 3 Cal Marketing. we'll just go on to questions because I'm going to be here for a little while longer. Okay, so how do I do questions? I read them? Okay, so read them out okay. loud. So and then I'll see a couple other locations. And then the other locations can... Yeah, just, yeah. I mean, announce that they can start sending All right, you guys can send in questions. There they are, <laughs> camera. Okay. Oh, have you seen a change with the efficiency of email marketing with the new filters on Gmail? So when you send your little auto subscribe, um, when they sign up to your email, they get an automatic email and you could say, you teach them, you teach them to open your emails. You teach them to drag that into, you've probably seen it, drag this into your inbox, out of your promotions tab into the inbox so that they see your emails. So you teach them how to do that. And again, we have, when, when you do it right and you email consistently, minimum every couple weeks year round, um, you won't have a lot going into spam and the customers will, for the most, most of them, enough of them will get your emails. So no, we, um, when something, whenever something changes in email marketing, we just get on top of it. And like when they, divided Gmail especially up into all the tabs. You just teach them to drag it into your main tab out of the promotions tab. So you've got to stay on top of it. Marketing is not something you do once and then you're done with it. It's, it's something that, um, and that's, um, I try to help everyone stay on top of it too by <laughs> knowing what's out there and what's changing. So we have one question. Okay. <coughs> oh. What is click rate? So when you, on my email statistics, I always have a link in my email. So when I send an email, this is gonna help on the click rate question. When I send an email, I subscribe to this rule of the power of one. I send the email to one person, which means their name is in there. It says dear and then their first name. And it's about one topic 
and it has one call to action. The call to action is what you're telling them to do in the email. Are you telling them to click here and read the research article, which is a relationship building post, or are you telling them to click here and pre-order, or click here to sign up? So you have one call to action. Some of them are gonna be relationships, some of them are gonna be sales. And that click rate is how many people clicked on that link you had there. So and on that particular one, there's a little over 1,000 people got the email, and it was a little over 10% clicked. So um, we had 100 people clicked on that link, and many of them place orders. So that's a click rate. <laughs> so we have a couple coming in. I have one here. I've been told people prefer text instead of email. So. Um, I hear this a lot where people say people don't read emails anymore. You train your people to either read your emails or not read your emails by how good of a marketer you are. So you will, if people don't read your emails, that's feedback that you aren't, um, you, you, you have some room to grow in your marketing efforts. So people, do, and again, I work, I have my, I can look through the windows of thousands of farms a year now. I teach my, my paid marketing course, I teach twice a year to 200 people per class. So, and then thousands of people I'm in communication with every day. So I can look through the windows of all these farms. Email marketing works when you practice your marketing skills and, and you fine tune them and you hone them and you tweak them and you get better. It's not a black and white science. You got to you got to try it and see how it works with your customer base. And I've been doing this for years, and I am still always reevaluating subject lines and, and, and programs I'm doing. So it's constant progress. And then he said, I've been told people prefer text instead of email. You can't build relationships through text. So we text people transactional things. I don't want to get a text from someone that says, hey, how are you doing? Did you make it to yoga class today? You know, none of that relationship building stuff belongs in email. Text is transactional. It's reminding me to be at the drop site tomorrow at 9 a.m. It's reminding me to get my order in, or it's reminding, so relationship building is email marketing, and text is definitely a tool, but it's not where you are, uh, I should be talking to the camera, it's not where you're going to build a consistent relationship. So they're two different tools used for two different purposes. And then. I guess one location is sent. Having too combo. much product to deal with. I'm not sure if, what else that means. It says uh, first combo in response to your question. Oh, oh what, yeah, what stresses you out about marketing? Having too much product to deal with. So. Then you want to focus on building your too much product to deal with. I'm not sure if that means that you don't have sales or what, but it's good to know. It stresses you out. <laughs> Some people don't have enough product. Um, what are the pros and cons of hiring a marketing company? So uh, if there was a marketing company that you guys could all hire that would do the job that would replace what I'm teaching you, I would give you that number. All I get are the complaints of, I hired this company, they put up two Facebook posts, where'd all my money go? So if s this skill that I have to market my farm and the skill when you learn to market your farms and build that relationship, no one can replace you. Like I can't hire what I do, I can't hire it done. So when you learn to build relationships with people, if you could hire someone that could do that, they would have their own business doing that because that's where all the money is. Like, I can hire someone to uh, raise farm products, but the selling of it is key. So um, I have people who say I'm, I'm going to hire a, a, you know, there's someone with a, they got a master's degree in marketing. Well, I have people who have master's degrees in marketing and take my marketing class and they didn't touch on any of that because this is, online what works in the online marketing world today so i don't know of a high, uh, a marketing company who would um who who asked this okay yeah i i, I 
if they're that good, <laughs> they've got their own business going. So they're, they're usually doing, you know, maybe they post, like I have an assistant who posts my social media five days a week and, and who does this or that. But I, if, trust me, it's a lot of work to build relationships. If I could hire it done, I would. But people want you. They want their, you are their hero. You're like their celebrity, you know, when they know they're a farmer. And you can't replace that. So I've never found uh, someone that someone can hire that can replace the farmer actually doing that or the business owner. Do all your emails link to your website or are they standalone? So they are rarely standalone. The purpose of the email is to link to something on your website. And here's why. Many people think that if they build a website, that people will come to your website, but they don't. You have to send them there. And the way you do that is your email. So yes, in my emails, I link to a website or something on the website. The only time I don't is if there's something that I only want my email list to see. A very special, like, you know, email, if you're on my email list, then you get one week advance notice to this product or whatever. And then my, but that, I would only do that once or twice a year. But yes, every email includes a link to my website because that helps with SEO, search engine optimization, which is the next section. <laughs> okay. Um, Can we get no more questions from Ms. Landing? Okay. All right. I think we're good. So should we take a restroom water break, like 10 minutes? Okay, sure. then we'll come back with websites. <laughs> All right. I can just take this off yeah. now.